Question of the day, what's your favorite underused mechanic? Now, I'm aware the irony of something being underused is that if you name a whole ton of them, then it could potentially be overused. But today, we're looking at a mechanic that is used in very few games, and it always kind of makes a splash when it's used. This would be translucent cards that are transparent cards that stack on top of each other. Today, we're talking about Canvas and the Reflections expansion. This is a game in which you're trying to make the best pieces of art using transparent cards, and as they stack onto each other, Yes, the art looks amazing as it stacks, but it starts to change the symbols. And depending on which card is on top, certain symbols are showing underneath, and you score points based on those symbols. Let's take a look at how Canvas and Reflections plays right now. So this is Canvas with the Reflections expansion added in. Now the reason I'm showing you this, even for the main video, is that because I'm never going to not use this board. Regardless of using the other things, I will still use this board because I just like the fact that it's a board. Now my only gripe is it's actually hard to pick up these little tokens and these cards off of a board rather than the mat, but the original mat moves around too much. But just the only difference is the mat looked like this, the board looks like that. The only other difference too is there are now two columns of cards. So I'll explain this in a minute, but if you were to take this card, you would have to pay for both of these cards in the column when you put your penalty down or your, your tokens down to pay for them. So normally in the old game, if you took this card, because there's only one row, you would pay one, two tokens and take that card. Now, if you want that card, you would have to pay for this one, this one, this one, and this one to get that card. When a card comes off, the rest slide down and a new one populates out of the box. Now this comes with a ton of new cards from the original edition that flip to the other side. So this is the card, by the way, I love that, that they're uh, transparent like that. This can flip and now the theme changes, the name changes and the symbols. The symbols themselves don't change, but where they go changes. So that will change those to the red, from red and yellow to purple and blue. Now let's talk about how you actually play the game. The goal of the game is to make three paintings. You have to make three to try to maximize your points based on the scoring. So let's take a look at this setup scoring. Now the reason I say this setup is because there are a whole lot of other scoring cards over here. Think Sagrada in the way that there are a bunch of ways to score. So you're talking about a ton of different combinations. You use four at a time, so that's a lot of options here when it comes to scoring. So let's take a look at this setup that we have right now. So for these, you're gonna evaluate each painting once you get three cards inside of your painting. Now you're allowed to have a hand of five cards, but you're only allowed to use three cards in a painting. So once you place the cards, you're then gonna evaluate. So this is balance. This one means you have to have the exact same amount of triangles as you have sun symbols. Now you'll notice in the art cards, let me grab a couple out here, that there are different symbols. And yes, they do sit on top of each other like that and form this picture. Now that's a bunch of them, but let's just say you have three. So let's say this is our painting here. Maybe good, maybe great, maybe terrible, right? So we have two triangles and one sun, which means we do not qualify for that. However, if we would have somehow managed to make this where we have, let's turn it like this, maybe turn this like this, there we go. Nope, still not doing it. Anyway, point being, if you have the same amount of triangles, the same amount of suns, you would score this, you would take a ribbon for that. So you take one of the ribbons. Now, if you do that with all three paintings, you can get up to 14 points. One is worth three, two is seven, three is 14. See how that works. This one is matching the uh, four symbols in a row, three matching symbols in a row. So that would be boom, 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 just like that. Three triangles or three suns there, you would get two for that one. This one does allow you to get multiple per painting. So if you're able to do it, you can do it. Some of them allow that, some of them obviously you can't because they're things like have only one uh, rainbow symbol or one sun symbol. This is have suns greater than the other one. So have the most suns. This one is have a rainbow and a non-adjacent triangle. So just like that. Pretty simple, right? Now you can have this multiple times because it's combos, basically pairs of rainbows and non-adjacent triangles. If a symbol or a one of the swatches here has two symbols in it, it does not count as adjacent. So these are these two suns are not adjacent to each other. Just so we're clear. When you take art cards, like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna pay for any that are to the uh, left of the card you take. So if you want these cards, they're free. However, if at some point you choose to take a card that has a bunch of tokens on it already, you get to take those tokens. So that's how you build your money back up. Each time you'll take a card, 
you'll get to evaluate it and see, do I really want to put this? And then the real struggle begins of, okay, I've got four cards here. Which three am I going to play? And you start putting the symbols together, moving stuff to the back, to the front to see, okay, do I want to use this one? Uh, maybe it's that. Maybe I need to cover up that symbol. So my, this blue to cover that symbol. The other thing about these cards are silver and gold bonuses. They give you points per things on your cards. So silver says I get points per rainbow. Now I have no rainbows currently, so I would get no silver points here. Gold is points per adjacent, and those are three points per. So you might get six points. Heck, you might get uh, three, six, nine, 12 points if you do that correctly. Have two here and two here. So there are ways to really bonus here. And again, having the ability to turn these around is pretty cool too because it can change where the symbols are and what they are. The other ways of scoring, there are two more ways of scoring. Technically a third one, but the Masterpiece variant is, is a pretty interesting thing. But this is the second way of scoring here. You will get one of these secret cards. Now there's multiple different variations of these. It'll be per metal, per wood, per plant, per animal in the actual art cards themselves of your painting. So after you've scored your paintings at the end of the game, seen what your total score is for ribbons, and that's cumulative across all three paintings. You might get one ribbon for one, ribbon for another, and a ribbon for the other one, and you'll score the points. But you'll then take this out, the cards, and see do they, based on the names of them, you can check this card, or you can kind of use common sense too and give you an idea per plant. So we have Spooky here. Let's look and see. Is Spooky in plants? Spooky is in plants. We would get two points for this card. Uh, is Falling in plants? Falling is, so we'd get another two points. So we would get four points for this. Don't think the sushi on a hook is, but we would get four additional points per this card here. Then the last bonus is a, a shared bonus card out here. That is, this one says three points if you have five or more purple plus um, purple and uh, red, blue. Sorry, I know my brain just stopped on the word blue. Three points per purple and blue. Back here is three points for the most total. The front, the blue side is more of a friendly scoring. The back side is more of a competitive scoring. Think like wingspan. But that is how you play canvas and reflections. Because when I say reflections, really the only thing you're adding is extra cards with the ability to flip the cards over. These gold points and then these stylistic uh, signature style cards. The other bonus that you get is that there's a masterpiece variant where at the end of the game you have one winner who wins with points and then you evaluate the paintings of everybody and whoever has the best painting wins the masterpiece variant. It's a shared victory, but let's be honest, the person who got the points is the real winner because they had to do a lot more work when it comes to mathing out the game and all that. So that is how the game plays. That's what it does. If you play with one or two players, there is a variant that will move cards out further and further, faster and faster. It's an option. I don't really know that it's the necessary, but there are options to do that as well. But that is how you play Canvas and Reflections. So that's Canvas, with and without the expansion. Now, I will say I'm never going to play without this expansion. There's just no reason to not play with the expansion. Yes, the board makes it a little bit more expensive, but you start with six so it doesn't change it, it mitigates that. So I'm never going to not use this expansion. Now, that being said, let's break this down like we normally do. Art, art direction, and then gameplay. First of all, the game is gorgeous. Some of the best game art there is. It's surreal, it's whimsical, it's beautiful. And with the added touch of the Reflections expansion, turning those cards over from you know growth to decay or from you know uh, drinks to salt and pepper, certain little things like that are just amazing how they managed to do the art on this side to this side. Hero and Plague is one of my favorite combos. So very cool stuff. And when you flip it, the art direction of this is pretty neat because the symbols at the bottom, they go from being here to over here to this side because it makes an actual flip. Very, very cool stuff. So it lets you manipulate that because the first version it's pretty set in stone. If those cards aren't out there, it's hard to get what you need. Whereas this one, you have a little bit of power to manipulate and think, okay, I can turn the card this way to maximize my points. So I'm a huge fan of the expansion, never play without it. Um, but art-wise, the game's gorgeous. Art direction, it's very easy to figure out what symbols mean and what I really love. Every single goal card, every single scoring card, it doesn't just show the symbol and you have to look it up in the back of the book. On the back of every single scoring card, is an example of how they score, how they don't work and how they do work. It's always shown. To me, that's brilliant. So if anybody ever has any trouble with 
hey, what does this scoring card do or what do these new scoring cards do? This knocks it out of the park with that. So Canvas is a beautiful game. It's a wonderful game. It's just a blast to play. We have played this many, many, many times already and we just busted it out of the uh, Kickstarter exclusive stuff relatively recently. But the only thing we're probably never going to do is that expansion where you give the win also to somebody who has the best art. We'll appreciate it, but at the end of the day, the game is about those points and being able to manipulate it because it doesn't really change what's on front or back necessarily as much than it does if you've maximized your symbol. So all in all, this is a game in the genre or in the weight of a, of a century, of a splendor, of a, um, what's that splendor game we played recently that was pretty great? Anyway, you can see down on the videos below. But this game is absolutely brilliant. So Canvas with the Reflections expansion, go get a copy of it right now. Also, fun fact, the boxes, and I don't know if the retail are gonna do this, but the boxes that I have, they have picture holders on the back, so you can hang these two against the uh, on the wall if you wanted to. So really great art. Love this game. Can't say enough good things about Canvas. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. And Dice Tower Brian, until next time, we'll see you.